Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. God wants to do things for you that will leave your mouth hanging open and all. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to give you favor. He wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to do great things through you and great things for you. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Now, faith works along with patience. Come on, I want to hear a groan out there. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and all the sin which clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Patience is waiting, it's enduring, it's going through, it's not quitting, it's not giving up, but even more than all of that, patience is an attitude that you learn to have, that while you're waiting on God, you stay calm, you keep a good confession, and you keep believing that God is going to do exactly what he told you he was going to do. If you're the kind of person that doesn't, you're not able to hang on to something very long, you're not gonna do very well trying to walk the faith walk, because I can pretty much tell you, not everything, but a good majority of things that you ask God for, you're gonna wait a while before you see them come to pass. Hebrews 6, 11, and 12, and we do desire that each one of you should show the same earnestness and have full assurance and hope until the end so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. So how do you inherit the promises of God? The 5,467 promises that are in here. You believe, you pray, you say, and you patiently do every little thing that God asked you to do. And if you're smart, you won't even believe to get an instant result. If you do, that's great. But if you don't, now you've got your mind set for hanging on and not giving up no matter how long it takes. Amen? It's interesting if you have... Um, if you got something wrong with you physically, you'll go to the doctor and get a prescription and they'll give you two or three refills. Matter of fact, we like it when they give us a bunch of refills. It's like, ooh, I can get this refilled as much as I want to. <laughs> and uh, you don't even really expect to go home and take one spoonful and everything be gone. You take the medicine, you wait. You take the medicine, you wait. If you're a little bit better, that encourages you. You take the medicine, you wait, you get it refilled. But well, can I tell you something? With this plan, you can have all the refills you want. You get unlimited refills. You can just keep going back and keep going back and keep going back to the Word of God. So faith works by patience. Faith is full of expectation. Faith has to be released. You ask. You say, you pray, you say, you do. One last scripture about patience, and then I'm going to go on to another section. Don't like these scriptures, never have liked them, don't like them any better today, but here it comes. James 1, 2, and 3, consider it completely joyful, my brethren. <laughs> Whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort, 
or you fall into a variety of temptations. Be assured and understand the trial and the proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Well, here's what I found out. They brought a lot of things out of me before we ever got around to patience. <laughs> Come on, how many of you know how to have a really good fit when things you don't? Yeah. Okay. So. Now, the other thing that I had to learn about faith that's really important is that faith works and is energized by love. So, let's think about love in three ways because that's the way the Bible talks about love. It talks about it in three ways. You gotta love God, love yourself, and love people. The first and the greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall love your neighbor even as you love yourself. Well, before we can even love God, we have to know that he loves us. How are you ever gonna put your faith in somebody if you don't know that they love you? So if you don't have a real revelation on how much God loves you, you might as well just park your little dream and vision over here for a few months and just do nothing but study how much God loves you. And when you can get in agreement with Romans 8, which says that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God, no matter how difficult, no matter how long, no matter how much it hurts, nothing can separate you from the love of God, then maybe you're ready to go to another level. You need to love yourself, because if you don't love yourself, you're not even going to want to ask God for anything. You're not, you know, you're not even going to believe that you should have anything, because you have such a low opinion of yourself. And by and large, if you are not gonna love people, if you're gonna be mad at people, if you're gonna mistreat people, then you might as well not expect to get very much from God because faith works by and through love. Good, they get this over there. You know, some of you, you're asking God for something, you're believing, you're even saying, you're praying, you're saying, but you've got unforgiveness in your heart. It's not gonna work. Faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6. All right, Mark 11, 23. I know you know it, but you need to hear it again. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. See, you, you believe first and you see later. I come from Missouri, the show me state. Our motto is, if I don't see it, I don't believe it. But that doesn't work in God's economy. You believe it before you ever see it. Come on. So wow, what a promise. Whatever you want, ask for it. Believe, you, believe you've received it, you're gonna get it. Verse 25, and, everybody say and. and. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anybody, forgive him, let it drop, leave it, let it go. Well, what does that have to do with prayer? What does that have to do with me getting what I want? Well, obviously everything. Faith only works by love. God's not gonna bless this ministry if Dave and I are gonna get up here and put on a show for everybody else and then fight all the time at home. You gotta live it behind closed doors, not just out in public where people can see you. Remember when I said this morning that there's no way that I would go to bed mad at Dave no matter what? Or maybe I said it last night, I don't know. Well, that's true, you know why? Well, first of all, I love God and I wanna do what he tells me to, but secondly, there's too much at stake here. I've worked too hard and too long for me to throw away everything that God has done in my life just because I want to satisfy some carnal emotion and stay mad at Dave. Amen. 
I can't do that. I can't do that to myself and I can't do it to you. And I'll tell you what, one of the greatest things that anybody could ever teach you, and you can never hear it too much, is the quicker you forgive, the stronger of a Christian you are. The quicker you forgive, the more spiritually mature you are. And don't ever let it bother you if you feel like you're always the first one to apologize and make peace. I always say whoever's the strongest is gonna apologize the first. And then lastly, and I wanted to end with this, faith brings results. When you put your faith in God, it brings results. If you wanna have some fun, later when you go home or tomorrow when you're rested, get out Hebrews chapter 11 and take the time to read it slowly and really think about the people that it's talking about and the unbelievably amazing things that they did through faith. Just listen to this. By faith, Abel brought to God a better sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch didn't see death, but was translated into heaven. <laughs> By faith, Noah built an ark when there was no visible evidence of rain. Can you imagine what a monumental task that was? to build that ark, and how everybody laughed at him and thought he was stark raven mad. We're not even sure today that they had ever seen rain, and certainly they'd never seen a flood. You talk about a guy who stepped out in faith and did what God told him to do. My gosh. By faith, Abraham left home and went to a place where he didn't even know where he was going when he stepped out. Because of faith, Sarah conceived a child long after she had the change of life. <laughs> By faith, Moses' parents hid him even though the king's decree said that he had to be killed. By faith, Moses, when he was grown, left the comfort of life in the palace and preferred to share the hardship of the Israelites in order to bring them out of Egypt and lead them to a better life. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, Daniel shut the mouths of lions while he was imprisoned with them overnight. And then he goes on, Hebrews 11, 32 through 40, if you can just be patient here for one second, I'm gonna finish with this. And what shall I say further? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets, who by the help of faith by the help of faith, who through faith, who by faith, regular, ordinary, everyday people that had lives just like we do, and yet they did very extraordinary things because they believed the promises of God. They lined their confession up with what God put in their heart, and they did what God told them to do, and they were world changers and people that we still read about today. Let me tell you something, God has got so much in store for you. God wants to do things for you that will leave your mouth hanging open and all. He wants to bless you, he wants to prosper you, he wants to give you favor, he wants to heal your broken heart, he wants to do great things through you and great things for you. But you gotta pray, say, and do. You gotta release your faith. Well, now I just wanna encourage you to remember that God wants to do great things through you and great things for you. But one of the things that we need to do is release our faith. Faith is a powerful force, but it can't be a dormant force. We need to release it. Faith sometimes can be challenging for some people to understand. So we've gathered some of your questions and Ginger's here with me now and we're gonna discuss some of the things that you need answers to. Well, Ginger, here we are again answering questions. Yep, great <laughs> questions as always. All of our uh, viewers always have some really good questions. So um, here's our first one. It says, 
We live in a world where circumstances keep changing. Marriages collapse, natural disasters are increasing, um, religions criticize one another. How do I protect my faith in this ever-changing world? I think that each one of us has to realize that we only stay strong in God through spending time with Him. You know, any relationship is going to get weak if you don't spend time some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. with the person that you want to have that relationship with. Right. That's just become very real to me, even more so. Just e even in thinking about natural relationships, in any relationship that you want to maintain, you have to put some time into it. So when we talk about spending time with God, it's talking to Him, which is what prayer is, and it's also uh, knowing His Word, and I think even serving God. In, in different ways. And one of the ways that you protect your faith is if you are around a lot of people who don't have any faith, make sure that you balance that out by purposely being with people who are strong in faith. Mm -hmm. I think there's a definite principle that you become like what you're around the most. I want to yeah. say that again. We become like what we are around the most. And so the way to protect your faith is to keep feeding it because whatever you feed is what's going to be the strongest. And as far as all the bad stuff in the world, if there's ever a time when we need our faith like never before, it's now. And that's one of the reasons why God has given it to us is because through faith, we can see what God can do and not be overwhelmed by the things that we see in the natural that the enemy's doing. Yeah, so l let me ask you about that because when we need it the most is when the world around us is shaking and yeah. yet that's when our faith could shake. But so, faith is a matter of the heart. Faith is the evidence of what we don't see. So what I do see doesn't have to determine my level of faith or even what I feel. You know, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe if I don't see the wounds in your hands. And so Jesus showed him, but he said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. So we can't go by what we see. Actually, the Bible tells us very plainly that in the last days, conditions are going to get much worse and they may get a lot worse than what they are right now. And so as believers, we need to keep going back to, thank you, God, that I can trust you. Trust is not something I have to do. It's a privilege. Mm -hmm. And faith is a privilege. Being able to put my faith in God when everything around me is shaking. I think we get in trouble when we focus too much on what's going on around us and not enough on the promises of God in His Word. Right. And you know, I have to do the same thing that I'm telling everybody else to do. I mean, every day, first thing I do, I spend time with God. I talk to Him in some way, shape, or form. I spend some time in the Word, whether I'm reading the Bible or I'm reading a book. Or sometimes, like this morning, I just thought about gratitude. And I thought, you know, I just want to set aside today as a day of thanksgiving. And so I started by just thanking God for everything that I could think of. But then I, I just, we've got so much available to us today. I just got online real quick and asked, show me scriptures on thanksgiving. And so I had a little mini Bible lesson right there. Yeah. And it, we, we have to talk to ourselves and we have to remind ourselves. That's, the Bible says you got to meditate on these things. And that's part of meditation. So that's how you feed your faith and keep yeah. it strong. Good. This question, I, I think, is one probably many people have. Wendy from Austin, Texas says, are faith and hope the same thing? Well, I don't, I don't think you can have faith without hope, but I don't think that they are exactly the same thing. I always like to say that hope is the springboard that gets you from here to really having faith in God. Hope is a positive expectation that something good is about to happen at any moment. So what I've come to learn is I think a lot of people are trying to have faith in God, but they have a hopeless attitude. Mm. They have a negative attitude. They, they've looked so much at what they haven't received mm -hmm. that they wanted, or they've looked so much at the bad things that have happened to them in life, or even the bad things that are going on around them. And so let, let's just say like, Take my life as an example. I was abused in my childhood. Can't really ever remember having anything good happen to me until I was well up into my 20s. And by then, I had such a bad attitude that I certainly had a hopeless attitude. I wasn't expecting anything good. 
but yet I was a believer in Christ and I went to church on a regular basis and I loved God. And yes, I prayed what I call desperation prayers, you know, like, oh God, I'm in trouble, help me. But did I really, really, really believe that he would? I don't know that I did. I think it was just kind of a desperation. I hope you do. I'm not sure you will. Right. And anything that I saw in my imagination or anything that was in my thoughts was always more fear that something else bad was going to happen. So when I really started studying hope and I learned what hope really is, I don't really understand how you can faith have faith if you don't have hope. So I think real faith is full of hope, mm -hmm. but I do think people can try to have faith without hope and I don't think it's real faith. Yeah, because you can also just say, oh, I hope that works out for you, but that's not the same as faith. That's not Bible hope. Right. That's not, the Bi Bible hope is an expectation yeah. that something good is going to happen. All right, here's a question from Dorothy. Can you have faith on behalf of someone else? Like yes. She's I, asking about like my parents. Can yeah. I have faith for them? I believe that you can to a certain degree. Here's what I think. I think when you pray for other people, that it opens the door for God to try to work in their life. Oh, that's interesting. So prayer opens doors. Yeah. So I can pray for someone who's not saved to be saved. I can pray for, you know, someone who needs a job to get a job. That opens the door for God to work in their life, whether that's try to convict them of sin or try to help them go in a different direction or try to help them change an attitude. But... God will never use my prayers to control somebody else's decisions. And so to me, it's real simple. I'm going to pray for everybody that I can, as much as I can, as long as I can, as often as God puts them on my heart. But if they end up still not making the right choice, I'm not going to believe that God didn't hear my prayers right. or that it was useless for me to pray because we're working with God to try to reconcile people back to him. Every believer has two ministries, the ministry of intercession and the ministry of reconciliation. So we are to pray that people would be reconciled either to God or to the will of God. There might be somebody who has a relationship with God, but they're still not walking in his will. So be sure you pray, but understand too that all that does is open the door for God to work. It doesn't force somebody to do the right thing. But your prayer of faith, I like what you said, does, does open a door. It matters. Oh, it always matters. It yeah. always matters. I mean, I wonder sometimes who prayed for me that helped my life to turn out the way that it did. Now, obviously, I had decisions to make, but, you know, I don't ever remember a time in my life where I did not have some kind of awareness of God as being real, and yet... I was not taught that in my home growing up, but I had a grandfather who was a very, very godly man. Yeah. And the one thing that I remember about him was he'd sit in his rocking chair and he had a little big brown belly. He'd sit in his rocking chair and he was always reading his Bible and praying, always reading his Bible and praying. And so he may very well have been the person who kept through his prayers, opening the door for yeah. God to keep getting to me. Yeah. Well, let me ask you one more, if you okay. don't mind. Um, this question says, I had been praying a very, uh, very hard for something specific and had full faith that God was going to help me. But what I saw was the opposite of what I had desperately been praying for. This has shattered my faith. I want to trust him again. How do I do that? Well, it's really almost impossible for me to answer that question properly because I don't I have no idea if what the person was praying for was even the will of God for them or not. <laughs> so the first thing is, is God does say that he will answer our prayers. He says that he hears our prayers. And there is even a scripture that says, if you abide in him, you can ask whatever you will and he'll do it. But you can't just pull one scripture out without taking into account other scriptures. And so we can ask God for anything. In James 4, it says, you have not because you ask not. Or you ask amiss. Or sometimes we're asking out of God's will or maybe just out of his timing. It's not his timing. Mm -hmm. Or it says you ask amiss or your motive for asking is wrong. You intend to just 
have this whatever it is right. for your own selfish pleasure. So here's the thing that I've come to, and I don't know if the person who asked the question is far enough along in their walk with God to be able to do this, but I've decided that I'm going to ask for anything that I want, but I also say to God, please don't give it to me if it's not your will. Because there are certain things in the Bible that we see clearly are the will of God. We know that it's God's will for every person to be saved, come to a knowledge of who He is. But there are many things that we don't know. We, you know, I can't just pray that I'm going to get this job or I'm going to get that promotion or, or if I'm single that I'm going to marry this person or that I'm going to get married this year. Right. Or, Faith you know, doesn't mean we get everything we want. Exactly. Faith does not mean that we get everything that we want. And even if we're praying for something that is the will of God, our times are in God's hands. And so the devil would love it if people would not get what they pray for and then give up and feel like they can't trust God anymore. Here's the thing that God put on my heart. If you don't get what you ask me for, I'm not holding out on you. I just know something better and you're not far enough along yet to know how to ask for that. Mm. So if God says no, or if he says not yet, we need to trust. That, that's really what trusting God is. We, we can't just trust God for things. We have to trust God in things and all the way through things. That's a big difference. Big difference. Yeah. So helpful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks. And the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to joycemeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace.